The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. The longest teaching of Jesus in the Bible is referred to as the Sermon on the Mount, and it is recorded in three successive chapters of the Gospel, according to Matthew, chapters 5, 6, and 7. In one of the teachings, Jesus taught what Bible scholars titled as the Golden Rule. Although the Bible didn't specifically mention anything like the Sermon on the Mount or the Golden Rule, the terms were coined out in order to help us simplify our study of the Bible and the teaching of Christ in this case. As we shall further study, the Golden Rule is one of the most important teachings of Jesus Christ during His earthly ministry. However, it is a hidden verse of the Bible that many preachers do not really talk about. As we will begin to journey into the depths of Christ's Word today, we will find out that every word that proceedeth from the mouth of Christ has serious implications on our lives here and in eternity as well. Before we introduce the concept of the Golden Rule, it is very important for us to know that where there is a rule, everyone is bound by it. It is often said that no one is above the law, and that is true, is a correct political system. The Golden Rule is therefore a law or divine principle under which every human is subjected. Each time societal rules are broken, there are always consequences on the society at large and an eventual judgment of the one who violated the law. In like manner, when we break the golden rule, the society suffers for it and we stand in risk of God's judgment. What then is the golden rule as stated by Christ? The golden rule is found in Matthew 7.12, which reads, Matthew 7.12, Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, also do to them, for this is the law and the prophets. The summary of the law and the prophets is the golden rule. Though short, it contains all the rudiments for a successful relationship with fellow humans on earth. We cannot harden our hearts against this rule and not face the dire consequence to breaking the principle that governs right coexistence with fellow humans. The Golden Rule contains all the law of Moses and the entire prophets that came before Jesus preached. Imagine that the summary of the law and the prophets is just a statement from the word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As short as the statement is, it is the key to living as God would have us live on earth. And as a matter of fact, no one can find fulfillment without obeying this divine principle. God wants his people to treat others as they want to be treated. Now allow me to give some examples. You would hate for people to always talk and bring up your past and your past mistakes that happened two years ago, but yet you bring up other people's pasts all the time. It's life. People make mistakes. Forgive and move on. Another example is, if your son-in-law was to cheat on your beautiful, precious daughter, you would hate that. Yet you cheat on your own wife on a regular basis. She is someone's beautiful, precious daughter. And even if she has no earthly parents that care about her, she is God's beautiful, precious daughter. God wants his people to treat others as they want to be treated. That is the golden rule. You want a woman that is loyal, that is faithful, that is loving and caring. But you are not loyal, you are not faithful, and you are as mean as a rattlesnake. You want a man in your life that honors you and respects you and cares for you, but you always put him down and manipulate him. If you own a business, be a man or a woman of integrity. Refuse to be backstabbing a friend. Be a person of honor. Just as sowing and reaping is a principle that cannot be avoided, the golden rule is a principle that guarantees you are going to receive back what you give to others. It is a rule that governs the existence of humanity at the global scale. What advantage we have as children of God if our knowledge and honor of God is decorated by obeying His divine principle. Our right standing with God is not all that is required from us. There must be a vertical relationship between believers and God and a horizontal relationship between believers and fellow humans. In this way, we will have intimacy with God and good report with men. Allow me to make this clear. God cares about how you treat others. God cares about how you treat your husband. God cares about how you treat your wife. God cares how you treat your neighbors. And God cares how you treat that one guy in your office that just gets under your skin. God cares. Jesus gave us the golden rule and he kept it himself. One of the greatest things I have discovered about Christ is that he will never ask us to do anything he has not modeled for us. As great as he was, he never oppressed anyone. He never cursed people, and he never gave up on humanity as cruel as we were to him. On the cross, Jesus prayed for those persecuting him. 
He was showing humanity the right way to live, although people didn't reciprocate Christ's love back to him. He proved the fact that you can always determine what you do in every situation. Someone might have acted in a bad way to you, but the choice is always yours whether to retaliate or to show love. So, when Jesus said we should love our enemies and bless those that curse us and pray for those that despitefully treat us, he meant that we should model the action we want to receive from others. When someone hurt you, it is in your power to decide whether to forgive the person or not. Whether you forgive your offenders or not is a choice you've made. So, by forgiving us and dying for us when we were most undeserving, Jesus was telling us indirectly how we ought to live. If I am permitted to paraphrase the golden rule, I would say that what you give is what you get. If you approach people with aggression, you will receive aggression back. Whatever you want people to do to you, do also to them. The preference here is you. Do what you want to people to do to you to them first. There are many arrogant people that want to enforce people to honor them. It doesn't ever work that way. If you want people below you to honor you, honor them and honor those above you too. If you do this, you will receive their honor as a reward and not by coercion. The fact that you are enforcing something is a proof that you have missed the procedure to securing it. If you respect people, you will be respected in return. Don't expect to receive what you are not giving. It's a good time for us to evaluate how people have been responding to us. That's probably what you have been doing to them for a long time. Evaluate the amount of honor or disdain you've got. That can be a pointer to how much you are obeying or defaulting in the golden rule. If everyone on earth would obey the golden rule, we would all be keepers of the law because both the law and the prophets are summarized in it. For instance, you won't steal because you don't want anyone to steal what belongs to you. You won't covet your neighbor's property because you don't want such in return. No one would murder if we all kept the golden rule. How about bearing false witness and defaming people? No one would do such a thing if we all keep the golden rule because we don't want to be victims of slander. The golden rule is not gender bias. Men, women, boys, girls, children, parents, and everyone living on earth are subject to it, regardless of the social class or religious belief. If God demands this from everyone, how much more he wants his children to be more exceptional in the society by the good works they do. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It is interesting to know that people cannot see our faith but they do see our works. So, the people around us judge our faith in God by the works they see us do. It is your good works that will cause people to glorify God. If you do evil to people around you, they will disdain God and they will retaliate. But if you do good to people around you, they will glorify God and reciprocate your love. If you do evil to someone and you get away with it, you have just sown a bad seed for yourself. Moreover, the principles of God cannot be broken it is what you sow, you will reap. Don't ever for one second think that people who backstab and treat people in horrible manners get away with it. They don't. The truth is, you reap what you sow, one way or another. There is no other religion that commands its believers to love their enemies and do good to those who hate them. But that is the command of Christ to us. Whether people love us in return isn't the issue. We are mandated to do to the other what we want them to do to us. Even if people are not doing what we expect them to do, we are to keep doing what we would want them to do to us, to them. Love is the greatest commandment, and it has great connection with the golden rule. Since every one of us would expect people to do good to us even when we are not deserving of it, Jesus used such expectation to oblige us to do the same for others. 1 John 4.20 says, If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? So, the proof that we love God is our actions of love towards the people around us. You cannot claim to love God if you are not showing love to people around you. God showed us love while we were yet sinners. He loved us first before we loved him. So, he used the golden rule to draw us to himself and commands us to do the same for others. God wanted us to love him, so he loved us first. He wanted us to be merciful to others, and he showed mercy. As children of God, we are to take after our Father. A giver will eventually become a receiver. How to receive is to be a giver first. Anything you want to receive at all, model the life of giving it. You want honor? Give it. You want money? Give it. 
Blessed is the hand that gives than the hand that receives, as the scripture says. Humanly speaking, the one receiving is tagged as blessed, but by divine order, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Whatever you wait to receive without giving it first will never come to you in full. If we all obey the golden rule, our relationship with ourselves will be such a peaceful and enjoyable one. Also in the last days, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.